Okay, let's have a little math battle here, and it's going to be algebra versus calculus. Which is easier to find the vertex of this shape right here? And this happens to be a parabola. Okay, of course, we're dealing with a quadratic equation or a quadratic function, but when we graph this thing, it will be a parabola, some sort of U-shaped thing like this. Now, if you're taking any sort of uh, algebra course, like Algebra 1, definitely Algebra 2, College Algebra, things like that, you should be able to locate the vertex of this quadratic equation, okay, i.e. this pr particular parabola. So if you think you could do this, uh, certainly uh, using algebra, because you likely don't know calculus, but maybe you know calculus as well, Either way, go ahead and tell me the vertex of this parabola. Uh, put your answer into the comment section. I'm going to show you the correct answer, and then we're going to go through this uh, and determine the uh, vertex of this parabola using algebra and calculus, and then you tell me which wins this battle. Okay, so before we get started, though, let me quickly introduce myself. My name is John. I'm the founder of TC Math Academy. I'm also a middle and high school math teacher. I have been teaching math for decades. Really is my true passion to help as many people as I possibly can learn mathematics. And I'm gonna tell you right now, all of you can be successful in math, but it requires three things. And I'm uh, especially uh, speaking to those of you that have a tough time with math. So the first thing is you gotta be willing to work hard. So if you're kind of looking for shortcuts or the easy way out, stop looking. There is uh, no shortcuts when it comes to mathematics. You're going to have to put in the effort. So that's the first thing. The second thing is you need encouragement. Okay, You need someone to tell you that there's hope, i.e. don't give up when it gets tough. And I'm telling you that there is a path forward. But what you need is this third thing. And that is great math instruction. So whoever you learn, learn from or whatever you learn from, you know, it's got to make sense, right? So nothing's more frustrating than being in a class. And I'm not knocking any uh, math teachers out there, by the way. Uh, but if you're sitting in a classroom and you totally no don't understand what's going on, then that's going to, you know, cause uh, frustration, i.e., you know, that's going to result in you not doing well in math. Because math is a technical subject. The way I like to teach math is to explain things in a very easy-to-understand way so all people know what's going on uh, without watering down what you need to know. So if you need help in your current math course or maybe some sort of special test that you're getting ready for that has math on it, there's a ton of them out there, things like the ASVAP, GED, SAT, maybe a teacher certification exam, or if you're homeschooling mathematics, Check out my math help program. I'm going to leave a link to it in the description of this video. I literally have over 100 plus different math courses that span these categories and much, much more. I'm also going to leave links to my math notes in the description as well. Most students don't have adequate notes to study from. Okay, so if your notes are so so, or if you're not taking notes, you need to fix this immediately. But you can use my notes in the meantime if you like. And if this video helps you out, don't forget to like and subscribe, as that definitely helps me out. Okay, so let's go ahead and find the vertex of this uh, quadratic function or this parabola. There's a couple of different ways that we could describe the situation, but here is the answer. The vertex is located at the point 3, negative 16. All right, well, if you um, got this right, that's very, very good. Matter of fact, you definitely earned a nice little happy face, an A plus, a 100%, and a few stars in my book. But uh, here's the deal. If you're looking at this problem, you're like, I don't even know what the vertex means. Well, let me go ahead and explain this right now. All right, so let's take a look at this problem. And we're going to look at it in a couple different ways. So here is our quadratic equation, right? So we have y is equal to x squared minus 6x minus 7. Now, if I told you to solve this quadratic equation, what you could do is set this equal to 0, okay? And this quadratic trinomial, we can actually factor into the, uh, these two binomials. And so we can be looking at this um, setup right here. x minus 7 times x plus 1 is equal to 0. When I uh, set each factor equal to 0 and solve for x, you have x is equal to 7 and x is equal to negative 1. These are uh, the solutions to this quadratic equation but they happen to also be what we call the zeros, okay, if you've ever heard this term, or real roots, okay, and of course the solutions to this quadratic function, this quadratic equation, okay, so these are real zeros, meaning that this is the point of intersection on the x-axis, so here, 
our little parabola is going to cross through uh, or intersect the x-axis at negative 1 at 7. Okay, now, by the way, let's go back up here real quick. Just a little bit of uh, things that you need to know about graphing parabolas. And again, this is a uh, kind of basic skill. I don't want to say basic, but it's something that you absolutely need to know in first-year algebra, certainly second-year algebra. But when you look at the coefficient of the x squared term, you can see it's positive. In other words, you don't have a negative number here. Because it's positive, it's going to be a happy positive parabola. It's going to look like this. If it was negative like this, it would be a sad parabola. Okay, so here we know we're going to be dealing with a happy parabola. In other words, it's going to have this kind of shape to it, and it's going to go through these two points. So if we wanted to graph this, we could kind of sketch this out here, and also we could find uh, the uh, y-intercept by simply letting x equal to 0. Now y-intercept would be negative 7 right there. Okay, But what we're looking for is this point here, the vertex, and the vertex is either the minimum or the maximum of the parabola. It's where the parabola bounces. Okay, So it's this point right there. That, and that's a specific x, y point. Okay, so this is what we're looking for. We're going to um, locate that using algebra. And then we're going to locate the same point using calculus. So let's get into algebra right now. Okay, so um, now if I'm going a little bit too fast uh, for, you, for your, uh, those of you out there, I can't possibly teach this all in total detail. So if you're studying this stuff and you need uh, you know, really in-depth instruction on how to solve various types of problems, check out my Algebra 1 course. Uh, I do teach this as well in my Algebra 2 courses uh, if you happen to be uh, at that level, Algebra 2, College Algebra, etc. All right, so how do we find the vertex using algebra? Well, what we need to do is take a look at our setup here. Okay, notice that this is in standard form. In other words, highest to lowest power. We have x squared, x, and a number. So think of the quadratic equation. Okay, so when we have a quadratic function written in standard form, all right, we can kind of use this general uh, setup right here. ax squared plus bx is equal to c. All this is saying is that the number in front of the x is a, the number in front, I'm sorry, number in front of the x squared is what we're going to let a be equal to. The number in front of x, okay, is going to be what b is going to be equal to. And then this number right here, this last number all by itself, it would be c. And we would use the c value if we we're doing something like the quadratic formula. But you can see here a is going to be equal to 1 and b is going to be equal to negative 6. And that's all I need because I have a lovely little formula for the vertex of a parabola. And uh, basically what you need to remember is minus b over 2a. Okay, so again, the vertex is an x, y point where you need to find the x point first. Okay, the x coordinate of that uh, x, y point. We're going to find that uh, by plugging in these um, a and b values into the formula minus b over 2a. Super simple. I'll talk about this part here in a second. That's how we get our y. Okay, so minus b over 2a, this is how we get our x value, minus b over 2a. What is b? Again, b is negative 6. So that's going to be minus a minus 6, right? Our negative of negative 6 over 2 times a, which, of course, is 1. So minus a minus 6 is a positive 6. 2 times 1 is 2. 6 divided by 2 is 3. So our x coordinate for our vertex is 3. Not that hard, okay? All right, so we have uh, this now. Now let's go ahead and get the y coordinate for the vertex. All right, so how do we get the y coordinate? Well, again, we have the x coordinate. We now, we now need the y coordinate. So this um, part of the formula simply means we're going to evaluate this function. Whatever we get for minus b over 2a, of course, we got 3. Whenever we get that answer, we're going to plug it in to the equation or plug it into the function. So let me show you specifically what that means. So here's our equation. We have y is equal to x squared minus 6x minus 7. Remember, you can think of y. y is always equal to f of x when we're talking about functions. Okay. So I could rewrite this quadratic equation as a quadratic function right here. And now this formula, okay, uh, we're taking this f, we're going to find f of whatever we got for minus b over 2a. So we're going to be finding f of 3. We're going to plug in 3 
uh, wherever, uh, where all the X's are, essentially, and then whatever we get out for um, that final value will be Y. Okay, so here's F of 3. So I'm going to be plugging in 3 right here with this X and this X. You can kind of see the work right there. 3 squared is 9. 9 minus 18. 6 times 3 is 18. Minus 7, we do all this number crunching, and we get negative 16. That means our Y coordinate for the vertex is negative 16. Okay, so our vertex is 3, negative 16. We are done, and we can kind of put this all together on this graph. This location here is 3, negative 16. Now, it's not to, to scale. Okay, this is kind of way down there, and then this point would be negative 7. That would be our y-intercept. There's, there's more details we can look at uh, the graph of this particular parabola. But anyways, we just use algebra to find the vertex. Now, let's go ahead and use calculus, and now you... Oh, well, after we use calculus, you make the final determination, which is easier. Now, of course, you need to understand some calculus, but if you don't, no problem. I'm going to go ahead and show you how easy it is to find the vertex using calculus. All right, so uh, when we use calculus, what you want to do is we want to find the first derivative. Okay, the first derivative. Now, the first derivative is basically the notation of it if we have y equals this uh, uh, function right here, okay, this x squared minus 6x, the first derivative of that notation will be y prime. You also can see it written as dy dx, but I'm going to use this notation right there. But the first derivative in calculus, this is a huge part of fundamental calculus. Basically, what that is is the slope. So if I have this function right here, okay, there's some sort of curve graphically that this thing represents. Anytime I want to find the slope anywhere along this curve, all I need to do is find the first derivative. Okay, If I can find the derivative, I can find the slope. And it's not that difficult to find the first derivative. There's different rules uh, to do it, but let's just see how easy it is. So we're going to find the first derivative of this function here. So that's going to be y prime or dy dx. So notice here I have x squared. Let me write this real big. x squared minus 6x minus 7. Okay, so I'm going to take this 2 and multiply by the number in front of the x, which is what? 1. That's going to give me a 2. Okay, now that's the variable x. And then this 2, I'm going to go down by 1. So that would be 1. Okay, so I'm going to take that 2. That little exponent right here, I'm going to multiply by the number in front of the x, which is 1. So that's 2 times 1 is 2. And then I'm going to decrease the value of x by 1. Specifically 1, it gives me 2x. Minus, we're going to do the same thing right here. Notice there is this is uh, negative 6x, but negative 6x to the first. So 1 times negative 6 is what? Negative 6. And this would be x. Uh, and then our, we're going to decrease by 1, so that would be 1 minus 1, or 0. Anything to the 0 power is 1, so there you go. Okay, so this is how we find the first derivative. Okay, so this is our nice little formula that will tell us the slope anywhere along the curve of any graph. Okay, so let me go ahead and show you uh, what this kind of means here. Okay, so here is our lovely parabola, okay? Now, let's suppose I wanted to find the slope right at this point of this parabola. Well, the slope would be something like this, right? How about the slope right there? The slope would be something like that. This is called the tangent line. And right here, the slope would be like this. But if we notice, the slope is going to be kind of doing this, this. As I go around the parabola, eventually, I have to make a U-turn, right? The, the slope will be zero. These are negative slopes, okay? And hopefully, again, you have some pretty decent al uh, algebra knowledge, uh, algebra knowledge, excuse me. And then right here, the slope, when it's totally horizontal, it's zero. And that, it starts to increase, it becomes positive, more positive, and even more positive, right? So this is what we're looking at in terms of the slope. Any Along any point along this curve, I can find the actual specific slope by using the first derivative of that um, uh, equation that expresses this graph. But right here, I'm very um, much interested in when the slope is equal to zero, okay? Because this is the absolute uh, minimum of this graph here, okay? That's where the uh, vertex is located, so the very, very bottom of the graph, and that's when this thing is doing a U-turn, when the slope is equal to zero. So when I know what x value right here 
is where the slope is equal to zero. I can figure that super easy, and that will be the vertex. So let's go ahead and do that right now. So here's the formula for the slope, right, of that particular equation. One is the slope equal to zero, super easy. We're just gonna go ahead and plug in zero right here for y, okay? So we could figure out, hey, uh, one is this, sl this slope right here. This is the equation for the slope or uh, the formula for the slope. One are you equal to zero? Well, let's set it equal to zero and we will go ahead and solve that equation. We're gonna move six to the other side. We have six is equal to two x or x is equal to three. So when x is equal to three, the slope is zero. Okay, so let's kind of look at our graph right here. So when this x is three down here, the slope along this parabola is zero. Okay, so uh, recall when we did that minus b over two a, we got x is equal to three as well. So how do we get y? We do it the same way. We're just gonna plug in at three into the function and we'll get y using the same technique. So we'll get the vertex, 3 over negative 16. Okay, so I'm going to tell you right now, if you know calculus, it's far easier to find the vertex of a parabola using calculus. But the cool thing about uh, calculus is you can do all sorts of stuff with the first derivative, right? It's not just necessarily the um, you know a parabola. You can find um, the maximum and minimum of. Yeah, as long as you have any uh, particular graph, okay, if you know the function of, let's say, some sort of polynomial, you can find out the points here, you can find out the points here, because this is a local maximum right here that's basically a vertex at this interval, and then down here, this is a minimum, we could find this point, no problem, because these are locations where the slope is equal to zero, okay? So the derivative, or specifically the first derivative in calculus is tremendously powerful, all right? And hopefully, you have a quick little introduction to why, you know, it works, um, and it could save you a lot of, uh, you know, number crunching in terms of algebra. But listen, you're probably not at the uh, calculus level, and you may not take calculus, but this is just a little taste of how powerful calculus is. But here's the deal. If you are taking an algebra course, you certainly need to know how to find the vertex of quadratic equations. All right, so if you need additional help with this, again, check out either one of my algebra courses, say Algebra 1 or Algebra 2. But if this video helped you out in some small way, don't forget to like and subscribe. And with that being said, I definitely wish you all the best in your mathematics adventures. Thank you for your time and have a great day.